guys, Grounders and Climbers, it's Sunday Club again. This is Sarah Jane. And uh, the way we always start is with a prayer. We ask God to help us. So make sure you're sitting comfortably. Close your eyes. Put your hands together if that helps you concentrate. I'm going to say a short prayer. Father God, thank you that we can learn about you from your Bible. Please help us to listen well today and to have fun as we learn about Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we're not going to meet Barney today. He lives with Jay. And we're not going to meet Tangerine today because he does live with me, but he's not going to be part of today's lesson. Instead, you see, I've got other friends and I want you to meet another friend who's called Hugo, aren't you? Hugo. And Hugo is going to help us today to learn some sign language. OK, so the first sign that we're going to learn, Hugo doesn't know it, is the sign for God and you just point up you say God 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 can you do that Hugo okay God 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 well done you got that right didn't you now you don't need to make such a fuss about it um, and the second word that we're going to learn is the word for thank you have you ever had to say thank you? Have you ever wanted to say thank you? What did you want to say thank you for? Oh, your bow tie. Yeah, that's a very beautiful bow tie, isn't it? Yeah. Did you say thank you for it? You're not sure? Oh dear. Well, how about saying thank you now? Okay. I'll sh Do you want to learn how? You say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Try it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well done. No, no, that's kisses. That's a bit different. Okay, just thank you. Good. Well done. And there are some other signs that I want to teach the children, but I think they're a bit hard for you because you've done quite a lot today, haven't you? Okay, so say goodbye to the children. And off you go. Well. The other signs I just wanted to teach you are too hard for him, but it's friendship, like that, hands together, like that, and then two, two, two bounces. Ready? That's friendship, or friends. Me is very obvious, it's just you point to yourself. So now you can say some things, can't you? You can say, thank you, God. You can also say, God is friends with me, or I am friends with God. Or you could use the sign for love, which is very obvious. You just go like that. Love. And then you could say, God loves me. I am friends with God. Well done. So in today's story, there is somebody who says thank you to God and he says he wants to be friends with God and he discovers that God loves him. So see if you can spot who it is, what he was saying thank you for and why he was sure that God loved him. I think we're ready for our story. Bye. Today's true Bible story is Jacob's return. It's from the book of Genesis, chapters 28 and 35. We've been learning about a man called Jacob. Do you remember that when he was young, he was a sneaky cheat? He cheated his brother Esau. Esau was so angry that Jacob was scared. Jacob left his home in Canaan and went off to work for his uncle Laban in Paddan Aram. But uncle Laban was more than a day's journey away. When night fell, Jacob lay down to sleep in the open air, with just a stone for his pillow. During the night, God appeared to him in a dream. In the dream, Jacob saw a stairway leading up to heaven, and the gates of heaven opened at the top of the stairs 
was God himself. God said to Jacob, I am the God of your grandfather Abraham and your father Isaac. Then God made the same promises to Jacob that he had made long ago, first to grandfather Abraham and then to father Isaac. He promised Jacob three wonderful things. First, he promised that Jacob's family would always have the land of Canaan, which had been promised to Abraham as their home. Second, he said that Jacob would have a huge family, so many they couldn't be counted. Third, he promised that all the nations of the world would be blessed through Jacob's family. God promised to be with Jacob, to look after him and to bring him back home. What an amazing dream! Next morning, when Jacob woke up, he thought, God is in this place and I never knew it. It made him feel a bit afraid. God is awesome. He took the stone he'd been using as a pillow and set it on end to mark the place. He called the place Bethel, which means God's house. But I don't think Jacob was too sure yet about those promises. He wasn't sure he could trust them. And perhaps he was too worried about his immediate problems to think about these big promises for the future. So he made a deal with God. He asked God for three much smaller things. He said, God, if you will watch over me on this journey and give me food to eat and clothes to wear and bring me back home to my dad, then... Then you will be my God and I will be your friend. After that, Jacob went on his way to Paddan Aram, where Uncle Laban lived. And when he got there, he worked for his Uncle Laban for 20 long years. That's a long, long time. But we heard the stories, didn't we, about how even though Jacob and Laban were both sneaky cheats, God always looked after Jacob. By the time Jacob finally set off for home in Canaan, he had several wives, 11 sons, one daughter and lots of sheep, goats, donkeys and camels. God told Jacob to go back to Bethel, where God had first spoken to him in his dream. So Jacob went there. Jacob remembered the deal he had done with God. He remembered that all the time he'd been away in Paddan Aram, God had done far more than just giving him his food and clothes. God had given him a large family, made him a rich man and kept him safe from Laban and Esau. And God had brought him home. So it was time for Jacob to do what he had promised. He called his whole family together. He said, from now on, we must worship the true God of Abraham and Isaac. Get rid of all your other religions. If you have any statues that you're worshipping or any other religious objects, give them to me and I will bury them. So that is what they did. Jacob was saying, thank you, God. He was saying, I am God's friend. So Jacob went back to Bethel and when he got there, God appeared to him a second time. And God repeated the big promises he made the first time. He promised the land, a big family and all the blessings of his love. He hadn't finished giving good things to Jacob. When God had stopped speaking, Jacob set up a pillar to mark the spot. That's a great happy ending to Jacob's story, isn't it? But it wasn't really the end and it wasn't all happy. Even though Rachel and Jacob had a 12th son, Benjamin, which was a happy thing, Rachel got sick and died, which was a sad thing. Some other people died too, including Jacob's father Isaac. And at about the same time, one of Jacob's sons did a really bad thing. It wasn't quite happy ever after. You see, nobody could enjoy the real meaning of those three big promises until Jesus died on the cross to take away sin and death. 
God brought Jacob back to Canaan, but Jesus will take us to our true home in heaven. In John's Gospel it says, God loved the world so much that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in him won't die but will live forever. The promise of a land to live in is really a promise of heaven. The promise of a big family is really a promise that there will be lots and lots and lots of people in heaven. Everyone who is a friend of Jesus will be there. And the promise of God's love and blessing tells us that there will be people there from every country and there won't be any more sickness or death or people doing bad things. It will be wonderful. Can you remember the signs for thank you God? Can you remember the signs for I am God's friend? You might want to make them now. I'm going to.